everybody. I'm Jim Carroll at Converge Network Digest. Today, as part of our Next Gen Infrastructure Series, in collaboration with AvidThink, I had the chance to catch up with Mike Bouchon, who's VP of Data Center at Juniper Networks, to hear about the next phase of intent-based networking and analytics, in particular, the extension of Juniper Abstract capabilities to edge data centers. So, Mike, can you put this into a larger context for us? So uh, I guess the f first thing is first. I mean, this is really a continuation of the Abstra um, integration for us. Uh, we acquired Abstra you know, just over a year ago at this point, primarily with the aim of, of changing data center operations. I mean, the fundamental belief is that the action from a data center perspective is less about what's happening on the box and more about what's happening above the box. And given what Abstra has done in the whole intent-based networking space, we think that uh, we're, we, we've tapped into something pretty special here. And, and the momentum we've seen inside our business has, has been pretty phenomenal. Um, we've increased our, our Abstra logos, by the way, you know, somewhere around 7x since we acquired them. Um, we've got you know, literally uh, hundreds of, of Juniper sellers now with active opportunities. I don't think pe most people care about how many sellers we have, but it's a, it's a proxy for what's the demand look like for doing things a bit different. And that's, that's really this launch is, is kind of in, a, um, in response to what that demand looks like. Um, in terms of what we're doing here, uh, it requires me a, to do a little bit of background on kind of what Abstra is, just to, to set some basics. So I'll spend just a minute on that. Um, you know, Abstra, they're the pioneers of intent-based networking. The idea that networks ought not be the bottoms-up roll-up of individual configuration statements distributed across hundreds or thousands of devices, that the network ought to be a top-down declarative abstracted from the underlying vendor specific syntax that uh, that you know typically drives you know provisioning and then the operations that follow um, once we have that then the question is how do we take the goodness of that intent based networking approach and extend it to more things that's what this announcement's about first and foremost we're looking at you know changing the um, or, or i guess adding to the the architectures that we support um, within Abstra, there's this notion of a blueprint. A blueprint is exactly what it sounds like. It says, here's what a data center ought to look like. The idea is that we can give you an expert data center without asking you to be a, a data center expert. Now, up until now, we focus primarily on you know, typical leaf spine deployments, um, you know, where you might have you know, racks of equipment uh, typically deployed in pods. You know, think of these as like those big centralized data centers that you know, really mark you know, what data centers have looked like for probably the past 10, 12 years. Uh, what we're doing in this announcement is we're extending that to the edge. Uh, not all data centers are gonna be huge. Some data centers are just a couple of racks and they're deployed closer to the user. Um, if you think of things like uh, 5G, uh, IoT, you think of um, telco cloud where there's services being offered closer to where the users are because maybe you need better latency, maybe performance demands it, maybe um, we're distributing the workloads closer to where the data is because we wanna simplify what transport looks like. Maybe it's just a mid-sized enterprise that has a couple of racks, they don't have a full-blown data center. Whatever the case, these smaller data centers typically um, have just a couple of racks of equipment we're now extending Abstra into these you know, kind of edge use cases. It's extending all the goodness of, of intent-based networking, all of the, the tenets of reliability, the idea that we can you know, do top-down instead of bottom-up, and the idea that we can compare the network as intended to the network as running to tell you if it's working the way that you want it to. We take all of that and we extend it to these edge use cases. Like that's really the first part of the announcement here today. Yeah. Oh, okay. So, um, talk a little bit about where the innovation is here, and you know, there's kind of this notion, in, of course, in networking, the the n squared, right? The mm -hmm. more connections you have, the more valuable the network becomes, and it would seem that um, you know, the the deeper you can extend this, the the better value that you're getting, uh, but. I think in AI we also have the issue of you know training, right? Mm -hmm. uh, your your self-driving car first generation hasn't been trained enough, and over time it's going to be getting better. 
So, you know, how far along do you, do you think this is and how much more is there to go to make it really um, deliver its full promise? Yeah. Uh, to me, it, it feels a little bit like a marathon. Um, I think if you look forward, you say, gosh, there's a lot of miles to go. Um, if you're clever enough to look backwards, you say, wow, we've really come a long way. So I feel like we're kind of in, in kind of the middle miles at this point. Um, you know, we've simplified, uh, you know, rollout of, of you know, new data centers, new racks, new pods. I mean, that's that's done in clicks at this point. We've got customers that have taken, you know, what, it would, what would have taken days or weeks and they've taken that down to you know, literally hours. We've been able to talk to customers that can get even like proofs of concept up in, in you know, like in, in a small number of hours where you're replicating an entire data center. Like that's that's real progress. But your comments about like how far do we still have to go? I mean, absolutely. There's just a lot of things we can do. Uh, let me try to make this a little bit concrete for you. So when we say that we, we have um, an intent, we, we, what we do is we create a model of that network as intended. Here's the way the network ought to look. We can simulate the device and network state, just the, the types of information that you would see if this was work, running in production. And then what you do is uh, you compare that to what's actually deployed. We deploy a bunch of sensors. Think of these as uh, telemetry probes. And we can look and say what information actually exists in production. And when what exists is the same as what's expected, then things are good. When what exists is different, then that's when you start to you say, okay, well then what's, what's the actual issue? How do we remediate that? Now, as we add more and more of these sensors, more and more of the probes, as we integrate with more and more of the systems that not, not just in the network, but around the network, that gives us more access to information. When you talk about AI, right, what our you know, friends on the MIST side of the Juniper house would tell you is that good AI starts with good data, right? If you don't have access to good information, then you can't really reach really good conclusions and it's difficult to take any kind of meaningful remediation action at that point. It's really no different in the data center. What we're doing with, with Abstra is building out the, the, the telemetry infrastructure that allows us to create better models. Let's, um, let's have better visibility into to what's working and what's not working. And then from there, create uh, you know, better examples of, of things that we can do. Now, let me, again, let me make that kind of concrete because that's pretty vague. If I'm a listener to this, I'd be like, uh, that sounds like a lot of words, Mike, but I'm not sure what you just said. Um, let's say you want to make a change. You're going to change edge policy, firewall rules. Um, you're going to change them on a set number of, of uh, top of rack switches. If we know where we want to make the change, and we know the servers that are connected to those ports, and we know from VM, like from vCenter, we know what hosts are on those servers and what applications are, are running there, then could we not create effectively a blast radius that says, based on the change you want to make, based on where you want to make that change, what are the possible applications that might be impacted? Like that's the kind of thing we're talking about. So when you talk about like your, your early generations and the training and the learning, like the idea that we can connect into surrounding systems, I mean, that's where the magic is. So when people buy you know, today, they get value around provisioning, they get better visibility, they get you know, a lot of the, the benefits of intent-based network. But the thing that you're buying into isn't what we can do today, it's like, let me improve my day, what I'm doing now, but let me place a bet on that, that AI bit that you're talking about later. Like that's, that's what we're really up to. Hey, just, just one, one more question here. And, and that is, you know, you mentioned the telemetry infrastructure basically. And so th this, this is the question about the back end and how that scales to keep pace with this extension out mm -hmm. through the network into the edge. I mean, how big of a, telemetry infrastructure or back-end infrastructure are we talking about is the scales? Uh, you can, you can be, it can be as small as you need to. We've got environments. I mean, literally, we've got uh, customers that are running just a couple of racks. Uh, and then we scale into, you know, basically, you know, cloud scale, what we would call uh, the cloud majors. Don't think of like uh, an Amazon or Microsoft. Obviously, they build their own infrastructure for how they operate and manage their devices. But we are deployed across, you know, large, you know, cloud major type environments where they're operating, um, you know, thousands of devices. So we've got, you know, we've, we've got the, the ability to scale. You know, what underpins all of this is essentially a set of graph databases doesn't matter if you understand how graph databases work. The point is that once we have the ability to kind of put the information together, then when we store that, then all of the operational benefits we're talking about, like that's all in play once we once we get things deployed. 
Uh, we've got customers across every segment at this point, across all you know, sort of shapes and sizes. So I'm confident that you know whatever the environment is, you know we've got at least a conversation to have. All right. Well, well great. Uh, anything else you'd like to highlight? Uh, yeah, I think that the other piece, um, you know, in addition to moving to the edge, the other piece we've done is we're really extending on the, the security side, right? I mean, gosh, we're in the uh, pretty crazy times right now globally. Um, you know, security is part of networking at this point, the days when there were like these, you know, hard lines between Absolutely. them. So what we've done on the, the Appstra side is we've pulled in this idea of policy assurance. When you set up your firewall rules, as an example, um, we've got the ability to look at how that plays out across the network as well. And so we can do things like you have, a, let's say you've got you know, a, a tenant A and tenant B or application A and application B. Typically, you manage those separately. But what happens if you've got overlap in that policy? How do you know that the policy is being um, applied the way you want it to? We can take that same idea of intent modeling and apply it to security mm -hmm. as well, which gives you a really strong segmentation story. And it allows you to use the network essentially as, as a, a set of enforcement points. So that if something happens, we can start to take action kind of uh, right. where we need to. Again, extending this idea of intent down into the security side. So it's, you know, the first part of this was let's, let's extend intent to the edge. The second part mm -hmm. is let's extend intent into security. It's all about making it easier to, to, to drive some of this value into different types of use cases. So are you, are you seeing customers with a, a you know, what if scenario playing that out uh, simulation wise? Um, uh, we haven't, so, so that's going to be done um, probably alongside other tools. So I don't think I've seen that yet, but I mean, you can imagine the things that you would do, right? There, there, um, so it's actually a great example. And actually it follows off of that blast radius conversation, which is if I've got two separate applications that have different types of policy, you know, what happens if I make a change to this policy? Do I see um, changes elsewhere? Um, what you've got to combine this with is a little bit of the, the, the modeling infrastructure. There's some tools out there that I, um, I'm a big fan of and, and partnership things that we're working on. Uh, probably can't reveal much of that today, but I would say stay tuned. Because just like you said before, like the whole eight, this, this is like a path. And, it's, and the question is, where are we going next? There's things that we're doing right now that drive immediate value. But the things that are coming next, like that's the stuff that ends up being really mind blowing. Awesome. We'll look forward to that next time then, Mike. Thank you. Thanks.